So this past weekend, Microsoft had their big XO18 Inside Xbox special, and it was, uh, it was definitely unique. The overly prompted crowd was legitimately cringy, just overexcited about everything and making it often hard to hear the presenters who many times couldn't even hear each other. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming today to talk and hear me talk. So, um, I'm going to explain a little bit, so if you could keep quiet a little bit, I'll be much appreciated. <laughs> and in terms of game announcements, it was very weak, honestly. This whole thing felt more like a super long ad for Xbox Game Pass, which they are adding some pretty solid titles to. PUBG, for one, still going strong. Well, it's going, right? But for real, Ori in the Blind Forest is a sweet addition, and the sequel, Will of the Wisps, will be there on day one when it launches. The first game I really can't say enough positive things about. If you have Game Pass and you haven't played it, there's going to be no excuse now, yet you have to. But while there wasn't much in terms of new games, we did get one blockbuster announcement, more so confirmation as it was rumored heavily before the event, in terms of a studio acquisition. And before I get into that, because it is really going to be the focus of the video, I want to run down the ones they announced back at E3, because I feel like people aren't really grasping how big of plays Microsoft has been making here. At E3, they announced the acquiring of Undead Labs, the team behind the State of Decay series. Despite their jank, I do believe these are the best simulations of surviving a zombie apocalypse, and we know there are many of those out there. Playground Games, the developers of the Forza series, Microsoft only had exclusivity deals with the company prior to this, now they own them outright. Compulsion Games, who made We Happy Few. The initiative is actually a studio they created that is going to be led by Daryl Gallagher, the former studio head for Crystal Dynamics, which is the studio behind the new Tomb Raider games. And finally, my favorite, Ninja Theory, who made the likes of the depressingly underrated Heavenly Sword on PS3, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, DMC Devil May Cry, and more recently the critically acclaimed Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which I have to mention here how Phil Spencer plugged the physical release of Hellblade, stressing that it is also coming to PS4. Similar to their approach with Minecraft, I really like the, you know, we'll take anyone's money attitude when it makes sense. And at this event, they added two more studios, in Exiles who if you like turn-based strategy, uh, here you go. They're the makers of Banner Saga and the Wasteland series. Wasteland 3, actually set to come out uh, not too long from now, I think. And the big one, Obsidian. The studio behind some of the greatest RPGs uh, of all time, really. Uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth, Pillars of Eternity, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and Fallout New Vegas, just to name a few. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this was heavily rumored before the event, but I found it to still be just as shocking when I heard it actually confirmed. I said on Twitter, and I'll say it again, it really seems like Microsoft is not screwing around. Now, these are some insane pickups, but they're really only going to be as good as Microsoft and Xbox allow them to be. We've seen it many times in the past, big corporation buys smaller studio and mismanages it right into the ground. Rare, after being acquired by Microsoft themselves. I mean, what a joke that turned out to be. Having them crank out Kinect games, uh, Banjo-Kazooie game we will not mention. But I think Microsoft has pulled a full 180 since, say, the days of the Kinect. Yes, the original reveal event for Xbox One will probably go down as the darkest day in Xbox history. Fans of the Xbox 360 eagerly awaiting their next video game system, and what did they get? Uh, an overpriced DVR with a motion tracker attached to it. This pretty much cement their future for the rest of the generation. Uh, you just don't come back from this big of a blunder, at least not when you start to turn around like halfway through everything. But a lot of people got fired over this. Management was shuffled around. Phil Spencer was made the head of Xbox. And yeah, I feel everything since has been a writing of the ship. Backwards compatibility was huge for me. I can't understate how cool it is to take Xbox 360 games, even original Xbox games, 
pop them into my Xbox One, and not only do they play, but oftentimes they look better than before. And to anyone who does want to downplay the value of backwards compatibility, the whole, oh, who wants to play old games deal? Yeah, that's why the Nintendo Classic systems have been just such a fail, right? And Sony is jumping on that train now. Uh, you don't need uh, a classic system for the Xbox uh, when you own the original games. You just pop them right into the current hardware and fire them up. Xbox Game Pass, while I still prefer physical and owning my own games, okay, don't, don't crucify me here, but especially as someone who makes videos about games, I like to try to play as many as possible, and games are expensive. I can't just go out and buy whatever just to try it for a bit. Game Pass allows me to check out a lot of stuff I wouldn't otherwise. Like, I would never buy a Forza game, but since the newly released Forza Horizon 4 was included with Game Pass, I gave it a go, and while it's certainly still not for me, I have a greater appreciation for it, and can understand why it's such a hit with car enthusiasts. Overall, I think this service is a really solid value. The Xbox One X, even though I think it came out too late, tells me they realize what their focus should have been from the start. Uh, as much as I love the Switch as a handheld and Nintendo's ability to surprise us with new ways to play, there's still nothing wrong with just having a powerful box and a kick-ass library of games, which is what Sony did this generation, and I'd say it worked out pretty well for them. It did take them a long time, but Xbox did get the hardware. I now buy pretty much all major third-party stuff on Xbox One since I've gotten the X, so the only thing it's really missing are those exclusives, and I think that's what they're looking to fix when the next gen starts. Surely all these new studios and current studios are going to be aimed at making games for the next gen, if they aren't already. And don't forget Microsoft now owns anything these developers were working on previously, before they were acquired. If there were any contracts with other companies, anything like that, they may have to be ironed out, but most likely, any secret projects they had in the works are heading to Xbox. I fully believe the mindset behind the X and services like Game Pass and backwards compatibility will carry over to the next generation of Xbox. Game Pass seems to be their main focus in terms of distribution. Backwards compatibility, I feel like, has just had too much work put into it to stop anytime soon. So I think that will continue and grow in the next generation. And all these development studios they've acquired should make it easy for them to not only have a strong launch lineup, but a steady flow of games coming, which remains their biggest problem today. Everything about the current state of Xbox on paper makes me want to recommend the Xbox One to console players, except for the lack of exclusives. If they can turn that around, and given the current direction, not only how many studios they've acquired, but specifically the ones they decided to throw the cash down for, I have faith. Sure, they can totally screw it up. Uh, it's very possible, but I'd even go as far to say as right now, I think Xbox, despite falling so far behind this generation, I think they are the favorite heading into the next generation. As I said, the exclusive games deal remains their biggest problem right now, uh, but these studio pickups can turn that around real quick. And everything they've done over the past couple years to me is essentially them saying, yeah, we screwed up big time, but we know what we did wrong and we're going to fix it. Also, things like Spencer name-dropping Project Scarlet at Xbox's E3 event makes me feel that they are just salivating to talk about the next gen and leave this one behind. Obviously, coming from behind makes it tough. They also have to win back many who went with PlayStation this generation. But again, just looking at where these two companies are right now, Xbox and PlayStation, Nintendo is kind of off on their own, kind of does their own thing. But Xbox and PlayStation, as the most direct competitors, yeah, I just look at what Xbox is doing right now, and PlayStation just seems so greedy and up their own ass these days. I think this could be the time. I think Microsoft has totally put themselves in a winning position as we head into the next generation. If they hit these things right, if they come out with a powerful box and, you know, all these companies they've acquired and the ones they have now are, you know, show off all these amazing games that are coming to it, I think they could pull that rug right out from under Sony and the PS5. And that's really what is so fun and interesting about console generations. When a new one starts, anything can happen. And with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on the potential comeback Microsoft seems to be setting themselves up for come next generation. I think it's almost impossible to argue that they aren't uh, making preparations, making big plays for it. 
Uh, but do you think they're going to pull it off or are they going to drop the ball and screw it up? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of Microsoft's preparations for the next gen. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter at Johnny Zakari. Join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.